We're living through the greatest jobs theft in the history of the world. It's what it is. Greatest, think of it, greatest jobs theft in the history of the world. A Trump administration will stop the jobs from leaving America. As part of our plan to bring back jobs, we're going to lower taxes on American business from 35 percent to 15 percent. We need somebody that's going to go to work to bring our jobs back. All right, you heard him, Donald Trump, promising to bring jobs back. Now, here's what his campaign said this morning about the earlier jobs report. It came out a couple of hours ago, and here's his response. Quote, this disastrous jobs report underscores the total failures of the Obama-Clinton economy that delivers only for donors and special interests and robs working families. President Obama is the first president in modern history not to have a single year of 3% growth. Peter Navarro is with us. He's one of the Trump economic advisors, frequent guest on the program. Peter, sure, welcome back. <laughs> You're number one in covering the accuracy of that report. I'm looking at all these spins on it. It's just, mm. Oh, it dropped to 4.9 percent unemployment, right? That's because people left the workforce. They didn't mention the fact that not manufacturing employment was down 9 percent. 9,000. 9,000 in, in an economy that, had, that can't go anywhere without that manufacturing well, base. To me, that report was a neat little capsule of the decline of America's middle class. If you lose 103,000 full-time jobs in a month yeah. and replace them with 90,000 part-time jobs, you're not helping middle America recover. Here's my favorite statistic, which is tragic. We have now, since 2009 in the Obama-Clinton economy, added more people to the rolls of food stamps than to the job rolls. Is 11 million added to the food stamp rolls, about 10 million added. To the job I mean, think of that. that. That is devastating in this country. And that's what you get when you grow at less than 2% for eight years. We're at a 1.5% now. We cannot sustain our economy, our government, our society. And this, this report, it's like, oh, yeah. It's, no. I, look, if we grew double the rate like Donald Trump wants to do, we would see job reports in the 200,000s, at least month in, at least. month out, because you add one point, Stuart. One point is 1.2 million jobs a year that you create. That's 100,000 more a month. So you add that to that anemic, awful performance, which is distorted by not counting uh, full-time versus uh, part-time properly, not looking at manufacturing. That was a horrible report. Yet it was. that's not what we read. No, that's in not what Wash you read. Po in or not, see it on no, it's not. the Clinton it's not. News Network. It, it <laughs> Do you know I'm a founder of CNN back in the day, oh, but it was gosh. not the Clinton News Network. Yeah, that's you, will, another story. you will atone for that, my son. Oh, I have over a long period of time. <laughs> uh, next one for you, Peter. Donald Trump. He's in the all-important state of New Hampshire. That's where he's going today. New Hampshire is very much a key. We've got a new poll, one, uh, two new polls actually. One shows him dead even, tied 38-38. There's another poll from Suffolk University, Boston Globe, tied right there at 42. And I'm going to bring this to your attention. An interesting headline from the Washington Post. Donald Trump has never been closer to the presidency than he is at this moment. And they predicate that story on New Hampshire. Because if the vote were today, and the polls were exactly the same as they are today. All Donald Trump needs to win the presidency is to win the four electoral college votes of New Hampshire. So look, my question to you is, you're the economics guy. Is there something about New Hampshire that makes them susceptible to Trump economics? It, bearing in mind the jobs report it's today? Not even, it's, it's not even the economics for me in New Hampshire. It's the live free or die state. These are the people that in some sense embody Donald Trump's independence, the drain the swamp, the stand alone, the stand tall for America. This is a state that, that, that is almost unique in this country in terms of how it lives and has its culture. But having said that, New Hampshire, like every other state in the Union, has been hammered by the bad trade deals. Things like, think about this, apples and, and milk, okay? When, when we had trade deals, their exports, it's a small part of their economy, but still they get hurt by that. They've lost thousands of manufacturing jobs because of bad trade deals. So they're part of this whole, um, but that state, it's independent, it's strong, live free or die. 
That's Donald Trump's message. Well, that's where he's going on Monday night, right before the actual election day. He's going to be there at 8 o'clock. I think it's Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh, Mike Pence, Donald Trump, both together. That's their final finale. The Granite so State, it's more right about a, a mineral. It's about, <laughs> about a, 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 a people. And that's a, that's a great state. All right, Peter Navarro, thank you very much for joining us, as always. I'm sure we'll see you again real soon. Thank you, Peter.